whenever we start, what brings you here, man? What brings you here and talking today? Oh, man. Well, you know, bro, we been had talks about this. Like, bro, we should just do one real quick. Facts. So I was like, man, when you free? And you was like, let's do it Friday. So mm-hmm. even with the other one, it was just like, man, let's just do one, bro. It's like you got something good on your hands with the business and just life. And you, yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? You always inspiring, just doing better, bro. Let's just have a little podcast. So I was like, you know, bro. And you always got good ideas. So I'm like, man, I'm going to go rock with my too, boy, Kevin. You feel me? So that's how that came about. You feel me? <laughs> so, Fact. yeah, brody. Okay, now a little background for those of you guys who are watching. I've man. known this dude for some years now. Oh man, I think we said we met when we were around like twelve ish, maybe middle school for sure. Yeah, middle school. definitely middle middle Red school. Storm. I was at ASA. Like <laughs> those days, those were the golden days, days, man. Oh man, mm-hmm. was it? Yeah, bro. So Atlanta. You know, so I was born in Crawford Long Hospital in Clayton County. Okay. Oh, you a Clayton baby? Not. Nah, I was born in Clayton, oh, but okay. I'm not a Clayton baby. Facts. Not a Clayton baby. We moved. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, we was living on the east side in this uh, neighborhood called Waters Edge. Mm-hmm. So really, like East kind of. Yeah. But then again, I had to go to high school at Parkview, so it's like. Yeah. But like, I was always at my granny house on Candler. Mm-hmm. I played ball on Memorial. You know, so I played at CDJ. So it was just like play the ASA on Memorial. So it's just like I was always over there, but I went to high school at Parkview. So okay, I me, mean, I just say like Stone Mountain. We we'll just keep it simple. Okay, like, so you think because you moved around a bunch, so Man, where, where, what I, place, place do you claim? Like I just said no. outside of. So we met then, and then you went to undergrad in South Carolina. South Carolina State, State right? Man, you gotta get that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Bulldog, look, yeah, eighteen ninety six. HBC, the, 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 the one. real, the real yeah. one, the real yeah. one. Bro. Like, how, how did you like it down there? Man, <laughs> boy, I had a ball. <laughs> yeah. I just say, like, I met my true, true, like, some of my best friends there. Like, yeah. people don't even understand, like, them long bus rides with a track team, dudes in mm-hmm. the back rapping, just talking crazy to each other, cracking jokes, all type of stuff. Right. Yeah. That whole track team, bro, that was a pinnacle. Right. Like, that was all, man, that was my dogs, man. Now, tell me, with sports, you were in track in college. How was that being an athlete at an HBC? I freshman. At an HBC, it was, it's cool, yeah. bro. Like, you go to conference, you just running with all your kinds. So, it's kind of mm-hmm. dope. Like, like, it's just cool, bro. You go to conference, like, the women beautiful. They all black. Like, it's, it's beautiful, bro. Yeah. The Howard. The, yeah. Man. What Jackson. conference? What conference? That's me at. Oh, so it's in the same one as all them. It's So, they were, and then everybody moved out. Like, A&T left. Oh, they, they, left, they, all go they went to SWAT. Because they're with Rhode Island now. and Yeah, so yeah. A&T is with like Rhode Island. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember the other school. Like, I mean, we went to the game. I forgot. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> so, nah, okay. South Carolina State was, man, conference used to be fun. It used to be like Delaware State, NCAP, right. Norfolk. Like, yes. And, bro, we used to be turned up in the stands. Dudes hitting bad flips. Our team might be oh, over there crazy. rapping. Yeah. Yeah. One time, my man Trey said something to this girl from North Carolina Central and almost got us to fighting because he said something to the girl. She started what? tripping. Like, bro, you yeah. like, man, I miss that jump, bro. Even during COVID, like, we weren't supposed to leave the bubble. Uh-huh. I'm steady sliding. Oh, the, Rex. Bro, I, was, I almost got uh, expelled. I got kicked out. And then Over they brought me back next semester. Oh, like, that's lovely. Yeah, yeah, I almost got suspended for a semester. What would you do? You keep talking I left. Right? Nah, I left. Oh, like, you left. Okay. So, my, me and our homies, we went to get something to eat off camp. I was the only one that had, yeah. like, I kept my car keys from my coach. Rex. And I was like, bro, we'll get something to eat, bro. I can't take this no more. So, we yeah. went to a hibachi spot. Yeah. But uh, it was it just had me my luck. My car battery died. Oh no! And I wasn't finna snitch on none of them. So I was like, yeah. "Hey, coach, it was just me all by myself." So uh-huh. then they kicked me off. Then I came right back next semester. So it was man, we had a time in the bubble, bro. Like, I used to leave yeah. every night. Like, Where Keys at? Gone. You yeah. show. <laughs> so yeah. Man. Okay, you went to the HBC. So you really loved the experience, man. Like it was I, really, yeah. I, bro. I there's nothing better than the HBCU, bro. Like uh-huh. you learn how to survive from financial aid yes. to just like, bro. Being in Orangeburg is. It's the worst, but it's like the best because like the yeah. people make it best. But then there's also that boo that happened. But other than mm-hmm. that, bro, that joke be fun. I like, love we, that, go, we love the calf, bro. And that's the same my yeah. track team used to say. Like every time we used to leave track, bro, we love the calf. The calf is nasty <laughs> for sure. But we just it was free, so we yeah, eat it. Well, technically it ain't free. We yeah, paying for I know it. What you, mean. you know what I'm saying? So we eat it, then we might go to the pit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it was. See, bro, I went to a PWI, so like I got a whole flipped joint when it comes to college like Man. my undergrad years i had to learn how to appreciate it because For i wasn't sure. around a lot of black people so like i was the black people like <laughs> me and the homies was the black, black people at the sure. school and everybody just kind of observing and it makes you it's weird you kind of get like insecure in a way For sure, because you're not like a part of the main shit 
Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Because everything is not for you. It's for the people you go to school with. And yeah. it's a predominantly white school. So I, I'm glad. And see, it makes me like hearing people like you say you love the HBCU makes me want to go. Because you hear you're things about homecoming, bro. I'm taking, oh, yeah. In fact, I got to go. I'm taking you to go. South Carolina State yeah. homecoming, bro. Listen, <laughs> it's different. I believe it. It's, listen, mm-hmm. it's different. Like, NCAT, is, you know, I go to NCAT right now yeah. just for my master's. I'm like, they homecoming cool, but it's something about, like, your school, bro. When it's your school, yeah. yeah. And it's, so, like, yeah. the people that you love. And I'm an alpha, so yeah. it's like, I see my boys, but then right. I go see my track homies, and it's like, uh-huh. this is who I started with. Like, they know me best. So right. it's like, and my, man, that's my, man, I love my dog. I love I my love track that, team. Man. I love my alpha brothers, too, mm-hmm. but my track team, bro. Mm-hmm. Man, bro, I wouldn't trade it for the world, bro. Absolutely, man. Now, talk, talk to me about then um, life after college. You went to school in South Carolina State. What made you come to Charlotte? Shoot, so really I went to Greensboro first. Remember, because I, oh, I yeah, stayed okay. in Greensboro for 10 months because I was mm-hmm. going to a in person. Yes, so. how was life out there? Greensboro is cool, but it's grimy. Like, it's yeah. just... It's like a, it's just a, it's a nigga city, bro. Like, yeah, to there's me, nothing to do up there, man. Like, when, when y'all took me up there, I was like, man, what in the hell? Like, it's nothing, but it's in it, A&T's in the smack of the hood, like every other HBCU. Facts. But A&T, cool, bro. I met some great professors. Like, I really ain't mingled with the undergrad because, like, bro, I'm in grad school. So, like, my yeah, classes yeah. is at, like, six. Then I'm yes. working in the office, so I'm not even around undergrad. So, I really ain't right. get to meet many. Mm-hmm. Then you, like, I will say... The food at A&T, though? I heard it's nice. Man, Y'all took me to the cabin. Yeah, and I was like, man. That shit nice, right? What? Yeah. I had Chick-fil-A on my campus. Like, what? come on, man. What? Bro. With black people, I said, man, it's got to be war. It's got to be crazy. Nah, it'd be cool, bro. Like, yeah. you just going to stand in line a lot of A&T. That's all it is, bro. Especially yeah. at the Chick-fil-A. Right. Like, I will say A&T shocked me. Though. Like, my first day, you seeing young niggas come out with the, the Cartier, like, wristwatch. <laughs> like, everybody fresh. I'm over there in some, okay. like, some J's. That's what I don't like about... From what I've experienced with HBCUs, oh, it's we, like, everybody gonna be fresh. Bro. Yeah, bro, and the, everybody gonna be. Fresh. The good thing about going to school, white kids, man, I pull up, I pull up like this, like this is the max. This I is mean, max. I did. If I went to class, like, bro, I used to go to class and some slides, maybe like yeah. some easy slides or just some running shoes, because I knew I was going to practice right after. Right. Or I might just have some J's on some sweatpants. Bro, I rarely wore jeans mm-hmm. in college, or I, it was either hoodie jeans or short cross country meet or something. So I'm coming back from yeah. cross country meet, like, uh, then COVID, then like, yeah. Yeah, but nah, homecoming at South Carolina State is different. It's like it's really mm-hmm. family oriented, bro. And it's really like, mm-hmm. it look like it look all these homecomings look like a movie, man. It's love, bro. It's real love at South Carolina State, bro. That's- now tell me, you said that you was talking about the hustler mentality. You want your homie to start business, right? This yeah. is perfectly goes into you. You so you were in Greensboro. You you enjoyed that time for whatever you had. Then yeah, you kind of cut it short and came here. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm assuming for work, right? Yeah, that's when I was working mm-hmm. at the insurance company. Yeah, I went rocking that. That nine to five ain't me, bro. I, I realized that nine to five ain't me. And uh-huh. I don't like to listen. So you telling me, yeah, sit here yeah. for eight hours. Like, nah, bro, I can't even sit. You, you know what's funny about the nine to five? It be the little things that take people out. It's, it's like, it's stuff like that. It's like, bro, to be here, sit and listen. Or like the the lack of real conversation I have with people. Like everything's oh, fake. fake. Like everything's politics. Like, oh. hey, how are you? Oh, I'm doing well. Like, like you can't actually be yourself. You might be having the worst day of your life. Like you really got to put fake. on the facade. And, you know, if you come if you come to work and your energy's off for a day, someone's going to say, hey, you know, Marquise, you know, we, we just kind of noticed you you were a little off today. And you're like, bro, I guys, I can't have a bad day in here. Like, what's going on? And you black. Man, <laughs> so you like, <laughs> Bro, anything you do, like, mm-hmm. bro, I was the only black dude in my little accounting yeah. analyst section. So, like, when I'm talking, you know, bro, I don't talk proper. Like, bro, my words be slurred and my words that's be that's fast. That's so, like, white girl mm-hmm. look at me like, huh? I'm like, bro, come right. on, bro. Like, like, they didn't even read my resume. She said, oh, my God, you went to South Carolina? You're a Gamecock? I said, no. Like, I went to South Carolina State <laughs> Bulldogs. Oh, where's that? In yeah. Orangeburg. Oh, never heard of it. I went to Clemson. <laughs> okay. Oh. Like, why is you talking okay. to me? Like, what's going on, bro? Right. So, it's just, that world ain't for me, bro. Even the job yes. I got now, like, yeah. it's cool, like, being a associate accountant. Like, it's cool. But, bro, I be back there touching engineering parts. Like, yeah. I don't, bro, I be touching yeah. stuff, assembling mm-hmm. stuff. I'm like, bro, what am I doing back here? To your earlier point, I think what's tough is every time, especially when I talk to young people, the biggest thing right. be where we're 22, 23, 24, sure. 25, 26, whatever, and now you're working with people who are in their 50s, 40s, 60s, 
and you'll be so surprised how disconnected our generations are. Like, bro, you bro. feel me? When you try to have a conversation, I used to think it was a joke that people talked about weather all the time at work. Bro. Well, I'd be the first one. Man, it's raining. Man, man, man. man what? Did you guys see what's, Yeah, you feel you guys saw the weather, man. It's, it's also a nice day. I'm like, yeah, because I other than the weather, I don't have much to talk about. Which, Because when you ask me, hey, what'd you do this weekend? Here I go, um, knowing I was at the club, you know, I was at the club the whole weekend, I was getting lit, I was doing whatever, I just stayed home, man. Man, it got a lot, like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I just coached the kids, dog. Mm -hmm. and, and it's sad because it creates, like, this, this rundown culture effect of the, all the young people are lying to try and fit the image that the old people want right. of us, because they want to view us as them. Fact. So we gotta lie to them and act like we're them. When it's, when we're not. That's the I say that's yeah. the hardest thing for me, bro. Cause I feel like I'm not mm -hmm. being authentic. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm not being myself. So I'm kind of like I'm talking to you know the white man. I'm like woo, yeah. woo and he like yeah man. Woo. I'm like nah, homie, I ain't even with that. And, like, and, and, and you know what's crazy about the authenticity piece? They say they want us to be authentic, but you know what they really mean? They want us to be authentic them. if it's like them. So right. they, that's why they hire people who are like them because when they're being authentic, they act like them. Yeah. But when it's like us, people who come from different cultures, our authenticity doesn't match up with how you were raised or know things to be. Right. So if I come in here and really be authentic, dude, I'm going to get fired. Man. I'm going to get fired the first day because I know me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know me. Like, man. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I, I think that's where we're down. all at right now. In life, sure. you know, you gotta just, you know, play the cards that you're dealt, bro. Yeah, you feel bro. me? Until you pick something or get a piece of cards that you like, just keep playing what you got until to win the game. Like it's about winning the game, and life is a long, it's, it's a, a long, long game. game so you're gonna get there, man. But I, 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 I love though that you haven't let it hinder you because. You know, one of the main things we want to talk about today is your business. You know, right? moving service, right? Man, it's different. And, and, it's different bro. and while working, you ended up starting your business. And Fair. I just want to tell the audience: I was in the car with you one day, and I remember oh, you yeah. said, "Hey, man, dude, I think I'm, I'm about to start this business, man. What you, what you think?" I was like, "Well, yeah, it's a good idea." But I'll, I'll be real from you, from my <laughs> perspective, right? A lot of dudes say, "I'm about to start something," they don't do. Like they, they say, dude, I'm gonna do this, and, and then like three months goes by, and then I just remember every time I call you or we hanging out, you're like, hey, dude, I just registered the LLC. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, oh, for, okay, he's okay. You call me like, bro, where you yeah. at? I'm in Riley. Bro. Right. Then I call you again, <laughs> dude. What, what you up to? Oh, dude, I just quit my job. I'm by, I'm, I'm doing a move right now. I'm like, what? Wait, what? All right, bro, I did that, and that's yeah. the thing, bro. Shout out to my man's Craig, cause my boy Craig. Mm -hmm. So I met Craig probably. So I moved to Charlotte. <laughs> In June, June 26th, I moved to Charlotte, for sure. Yeah. I met Craig in probably February, January. Because my man, Jay Ray, was going to NC State. So I used to go to NC State yes. a lot to go hoop and just kick it out there. I mean, I mean every day, bro. I got off work at 2 o'clock from A&T. Right. And I go see Craig. So Craig was... He has his own moving business, mm -hmm. and he was just so he used to come home, and like we met, we clicked automatically. Like, right, clicked. Like I can say, Craig really my dog. Like, that's my that's my brother. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Like that quick, and he was telling me about it. He's like, bro, you should just start one, bro. He's like, think about it. Don't nobody want to do this. He's like, it's so mm -hmm. much money because people are moving every day, and a hundred people move to Charlotte every day. When yes. I look at the statistics, I'm like, mm -hmm. and Craig was telling me like, bro, you really can take over, bro. Yeah. And Craig was just like, just do it, just do it. So one day I called him. I was like, hey, bro, I'm finna do it. He was like, all right. He sent me the LLC page. I was like, mm -hmm. I took my <laughs> the last tagger from that job. I said, bro, I'm gonna just do it. And yes. I remember we had that conversation. I said, bro, I'm finna start moving. But he's like, yeah, yes. bro, whatever. Woo. Like, do it. Like, I just started because, like, one, I want to have something for my kids when I go. Yes. And leave them with something. Two, mm -hmm. I wanted to expand it to Georgia and Florida because I got two brothers in Florida. Yes. And then I got my brother back home in Georgia, so I can just use that to just put money in everybody's pocket. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, bro, like, I quit my job. Like, real spill. I quit my job, like. And bro, I hustled, like, driving two hours. Like, mm -hmm. bro, you remember I used to get up at 3 a.m.? I know. Drive to Raleigh. Get Dude. there with Craig. Yes. Then we going, we might be going to Wilmington that day. We might be out there for eight hours. So, bro, I, there was days I didn't sleep for 24 hours. Yeah. I'm out there hustling in, in the hot, in the cold. It's raining, like, mm -hmm. me, Craig, my boy Daquan. And, like, so I'm really out there, like, grinding, bro. And you used to see, bro, I, I might leave at 3 a.m. and might not get back to 1 a.m., 2 a.m., yes. be asleep mm -hmm. for a whole day. Then Craig might call me again, like, hey, bro, I got another one. So now I'm back in Raleigh. Yeah. So it was like, 
and, and, and I wanted to ask you off of that, where do you get that hustle mentality from? Because Man. You, when you, like you said, when you told me you quit your job, I'm like, dude, what do you mean? Quit your job. And like a lot of people are afraid to take that leap of faith. You can't be scared out here, bro. Right. How do you mm -hmm. overcome it though? Because like even me, bro, I, I I have two parents who are entrepreneurs by heart. For sure. And I've still been nervous, like, I don't know what I what I want to do. And, yeah. and if I do it, is it gonna work out? How do I know it's gonna work out? And I'm I'm slowly getting over that. But yeah. like, take me through your process. God. Mm. Bro, when God speaks mm. to you, bro, can't nobody tell you nothing, bro. There's sometimes there'll be people like, bro, Keith, Keith don't listen. Keith's hard-headed, bro. Like, bro, yeah. bro, when God got something in your heart, bro, mm -hmm. it don't matter who tell you this. It don't matter who tell you what. Yeah. You got to let God guide you, bro. I'll say this for real. Like, there was nice. After I quit that job, I was like, man, did I do the right thing, bro? Am I tripping? Should I go back? Whoop. Right. But, like, being in that room sometimes, at, bro, I used to wake up at 2 a.m. and be like, man, am I tripping, man? Should I go find another job? And for some reason, I used to be like, bro, let me just trust God, bro. So I just kept going. Mm -hmm. I just kept hustling. Like the hustle come from my mom and my dad. Seeing them get up every morning and go to work. Seeing my, you know, so my mom used to run the numbers with my granddad back in the day, and that's yeah, that's illegal. <laughs> so my mom been hustling. My dad a hustling. Uh -huh. Like my uncles, my cousins, my brothers. So allegedly, like, alleg mm -hmm. nah, ain't no allegedly. We gonna talk about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like so, yeah. Like just seeing my family, like just just the grinds, and like yeah, all that, bro. I love it. Like, I love that. So, so I guess for you, it's been instilled in you. Bro, it's been instilled in you. Bro, if you yeah. don't hustle, ain't nobody going to do it for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. bro, you're going to be dead long as you're going to be alive. So why mm. not do something, bro? Like, I get we want to go to the club, go have fun, go drink with our homies. But at the end of the day, bro, I feel like if I'm not inspiring or trying to help somebody or giving yes. somebody some game. Mm -hmm. And say if I get hit by a bus today, if I know I gave somebody some type of game and they could use it in their life, bro, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm cool. Forget the fame. I don't. As long as my family good, yeah, wealthy, and you know what I'm saying, like even with my mentors and everything, like Mr. Will, Dr. Moore, yes, uh, my big bro in Greensboro, Jern, my barber Marcus right now, like they be telling me like, bro, just keep going, bro. Like mm -hmm. it's so cliche to say like keep going, but like, bro, you have to wake up every day and just keep going because at the end of the day, this life don't don't. You know what I'm saying? It don't stop, man. It don't stop for it no stop. one, and the time don't stop for nobody. So you gotta just. You got to do something, bro. And then it's like this, bro. Like, the more you do something that's you trying to reach your goal, you closer to what you're trying to get to. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like if you just, bro, you just got one step at a time, bro. One step. Absolutely. You got one step. And so tell me, where, where do you see the business going? Because from my perspective, I can say one thing that I, I really admire about you For sure. that I don't see in a lot of people. When a lot of people start a business, it's always me, me, me. I'm going to get rich. I'm going I'm to be the next Bill Gates and da, 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 da. And that's great, but it's like, dude, you're losing the whole vision. These me? guys started businesses that dis disrupted the economy to help people. Right. Right. And one thing I've always admired about you is you've always done, everything you do that I see you do, you're always trying to tag people into it. If you, if you can. If you can. I and, and I don't see that mentality in a lot of people because we live in a selfish world, you know? For Everyone's sure. just about them and what I can get out of this world. And so tell me why, how does that influence how you structure your business? And okay. then also, where do you see it going with that? Honestly, the whole, bro, mm -hmm. for me is like, I try to add people in that I like, I respect. Yeah. And if like you leave or we just don't see eye to eye, bro, like it's cool, man. I ain't gonna dish you, I ain't gonna, it's cool, bro. We just ain't see eye to eye. Go do your thing, you know what I'm saying? Go mm -hmm. start your own moving business. I ain't tripping, but like bringing people in, bro. Sometimes, bro, it's just my heart. Like, bro, I really genuinely be like, like wanting to see other people win, bro. Like, I also appreciate you, bro. Like, I be having to hit you while I'm at work. Like, hey, Kev, can you do this move for me? Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that you be like, yeah, Keith, I got you. And you go, you go handle it, bro. And I'd be cool because I'm like, I know my boy going to have my best interest. Mm -hmm. And I know you're going to do it right. Yeah. So it's all about just having that trust in people. And like, bro, the bigger picture, bro, I want to have. So I talked to my mans, Anthony and Peter today. Mm -hmm. So they sell solar panels in Florida. Yes. So they make chicken, but they only work three hours a day, four hours a day. Right. So Ant was like, bro, just give me the license, bro. Like, just show me what I need to do to get the LLC, and I'll put it under your name and put our names under register agents just in case something happened. I'm like, mm -hmm. cool. So just seeing that, like, I know my brothers got me. Yeah. I know my other older brother in Atlanta got me. So I'm like, okay, let me push this joint to Atlanta. And honestly, bro, even if I make a meal, bro, I'll still be like, nah, my homies was there to help me. Like, mm -hmm. bro, it's bro, it's bigger than me, bro. Yeah. It's bigger than me. It's I got nieces and nephews, so if they can eat off this. 
I'm cool. Yeah. I know if my boy Peter and have a baby, they baby can eat off this. Mm-hmm. My kids, when I have kids, can eat off this. So it's like, bro, I'm just trying to make sure everybody eat at the end of the day, bro. It's bigger than me, bro. When I leave this earth, you know what I'm saying? I want to make sure I came in and did better than what I did when I left. When I leave, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Make sure I leave a, a blueprint. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, like, there's so many ways to get money. You just got to find your niche. Like, I done tried the other stuff. I done tried to do this. So it's like, I feel like it's just my niche right now. Like, and who to say, bro, I might open up another business. Like, oh, that moving service on the back burner, but it's still bringing in money. Yes. I might go do something else. So it's, mm-hmm. it's just one of them things. Like, bro, you got to spread love, bro. Like, you just got to spread the love, bro. Because these are the same people that helped me, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, Anthony and Peter hold me accountable for everything. My gotcha. brother hold me accountable for everything. You hold me accountable. I'd be like, hey, Kev, my trip. He'd be like, ah, yeah, bro. You might want to. I'd be like, okay, bro, that's cool. <laughs> like, even with my boy Malcolm, Miles, and Brandon, like they hold me accountable for everything that I've done wrong. So it's like, mm-hmm. if I get back to them, yeah, bro, I'm doing it, bro. That's all that matters, bro. If I can get back to the circle that I grew up with, bro, people that have seen me mm-hmm. struggle, seen me go through my hardships, bro, that's all I want in life. Bro, I can die happy with that, bro. I love that, man. Sure. I love that. I feel like that. That's a, that's the approach I've started to take over the years because. Yeah. We can all get so caught up in our own success right. that we, like you said, we miss the bigger picture all the time. For it's sure. not about you. It's not about how much money you make or whatever. Because right. when you die, it's over. It's, it's over. over. I and can't take this with me. Yeah. Back. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you left is whatever you left. But right. what people will love the most about you. And I've seen this when rich people die, when poor people die, when average people die. What people will love the most about you is... How you made them feel when you were with them. Bro, and did is, you involve bro. them? Did you make them feel involved? Did you make them feel like you cared? And if you can leave people with that, you, yeah. you, you've done all that you could do. And all you can do, bro, is be yeah. human. Like, bro, I'm pretty sure I have made some people mad. I'm pretty sure there's some people that don't like me. But it's like, mm-hmm. I, if I know I've done you wrong, bro, I'm going to check myself. and be like, okay, we might not be cool, but let me make sure I don't do that to the next person. Mm-hmm. Let me make sure I check myself. And I'm like, oh, Keith, that one ain't right. And I, you know, I'll... How do you take accountability? You because, gotta take account of but I'm saying, how do you? Because I think it's tough. Because oh, man. I can tell you something like me. I, I can be. I'm a very harsh critic. I tell people. Yeah. So because of that, I don't even like sharing my opinion on a lot of things. Because I know if I give it to you, you're about you. Like if you can't take it, you're, you're gonna, gonna be, be mad. yeah. You're gonna be mad at me. Right. You see what I'm saying? And so, but you, I've noticed with you, you're really good at taking accountability and and putting your hand up and saying, "Hey, I fucked up here." Oh, you feel man. me? Or hey, I did that. Where does that come from for you? Because a lot of people have a tendency, especially, you know, we in cancel culture. People do, someone tells you, hey, bro, that thing you did was dumb and stuff. Now they're like, oh, I can't be friends with you, man. You're judging me. Yeah. You're mean. Like, how, how do you, how nah. are you able to take it? My whole life, bro, from sports, like, yeah. you gotta have, you gotta <laughs> have constructive criticism. Bro, I had a coach yeah. that used to yell at me about everything. Mm-hmm. Every day, every practice, bro. Every practice, he was just yelling every game. But, you got to also understand, just because he yelling don't mean he mad at you. Listen yes. to the words he's saying, not him yelling. And it yes. took me a minute to get that. Mm-hmm. So it was like, accountability just come from, bro. Bro, you know what's right from wrong, bro. You know yeah. what's right from wrong. And if you got people that hold you accountable, you can't be mad when they say, bro, you tripping. Or, bro, yeah. you, you this. Because those are your real friends. Mm-hmm. You ain't my real friend if you you let me go do some BS and be like, I knew that was going to happen. What you mean? You know, and like, didn't bring it up. Yeah. Like, why ain't you stop me? You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? So uh-huh. accountability is just... It's a trait that I have. Now, do I do I always take it well? No, bro. I'm human. Yeah. I'm gonna mess up. Right, bro. right, right. Am right, I right. gonna always be, you know, what I'm saying, happy to have constructive criticism? No, bro. I'm human. Like I'm not. Uh, I'm a hundred percent of the times, bro. I'm not gonna be. You know, what I'm saying, I'm not gonna hit ten for ten all the time without no. accountability, bro. Yeah. But as long as I got people around me, like, hey, bro, you tripping? Hey, bro, you wrong? Hey, bro, I think you should. You know, what I'm saying. But the only way for me to take that is you being in my circle, bro. Only. And I think it's one issue too. Like I listen to people, but like if you're not in my close circle of what I who I grew up with, or I respect yeah. you, mm. and I seen what you done going through, mm-hmm. then I can really listen to you. Or if me and you done being like about the butt heads, and I'm like, bro, you tripping? No, bro, you tripping? And we can still communicate through it without fighting or yes. just without, bro. You my man's. That's genuine, bro. Yeah. I done got into it with a lot of my partners, and. I knew I, we know it's genuine because we'll come back like, hey, bro, my fault, oh, my fault, bro. Like, mm-hmm. we, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, accountability is just something I think as a man you just gotta have. But even when you run, bro, take it on the chin. You can't run from it, bro. So you might as well wear it. Yeah. Call it a day. Everybody gonna be like, oh, you tripping? Woo. Some people gonna look at you as the bad guy, and that's cool. But you yeah. know, deep down in your heart, you know the truth. Absolutely. And sometimes you just gotta take that on the chin, bro. Mm-hmm. 
And so, I, you know, transitioning, then I feel like this goes so well into, into relationships. Ugh. But I want to give you the, the floor. <laughs> Before we get into that, I want to give you the floor to talk about any last thoughts that you'd like to share with your business. Lynch Lifts, by the way. Lynch Lifts, man. Like coming soon. to Florida as soon as Oh, as well as man. Soon. My boy Pete and Ant finna take over in Florida, so I appreciate mm-hmm. it. And it's mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. I called my man's Ant about it. And Ant was just like, man, I love what you're doing, bro. Like, I really love what you're doing. Bro, let's bring it to Florida. And I'm this is my best friend. Like, we done slept on the floor together. Facts. We done slept in the living room together at my Facts. mama's house. So I'm like, man, I know I can trust him and my boy Pete. Because we was with each other every day in high school. Yes. No matter what. And I used to see Ant come running down the street <laughs> from the back of the neighborhood. Yo, Keith, bro, what you uh-huh. doing? Like, that's my guy. Pete, we, me and Pete. I've known Pete since middle school. Like and them. Pete and Ant character is so uh-huh. dope to me, bro. And I love them boys. Like they took, and it's crazy. I get some of that from them because they took a leap of faith and went to Florida to sell mm-hmm. solar panels. Right. So it's like looking at them winning right now. I'm like, bro, I know I can win because we cut from the same cloth. Yes, sir. Like they done seen me struggle. I done seen them struggle. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, it used to be days I used to walk in my house. Aunt and Peter are already there, and I'm like, bro, what? The? They like, yeah, what's up, bro? <laughs> like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? In my room, I'm like, bro, what y'all like? Uh-huh. But I don't. That's my dogs, bro. Don't matter. Like it used to be nice. Like I, right, we go to. I'm in my bed sleep, Aunt on one side on the floor, Pete on the other side on the floor. Yeah. And this one, we were standing in this ranch house in uh, Little Brent. Man, my mm-hmm. house was small. My parents' room was right here, my room right here. Bro, Aunt and Pete be on one side yeah. on the floor, sleep. Mm-hmm. And my bathroom was like, so, bro, it was, so, that house was so small. Like, yeah. if Pete, was sleeping by the door, he getting hit by the door. <laughs> so it's like, if you open my bedroom, yeah. door, Aunt might get hit by the door. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, man, so I don't really been through it with them, man. So it's like, just hearing them boys be like, man, we trying to help. Yeah. And they, and they, I told the end of the day, he said, bro, you make me so proud, bro. And they always supported me through anything. Even when I was wrong, they like, bro, we love you, mm-hmm. but you wrong. Yeah. So. I love that, man. Yeah. Even Malcolm, Miles, and Brandon, they the same way. Yes, sir. So, like. Shout out to them Parkview boys, man. Man, Shout my out dog. to them Parkview boys, and my dog, man. Man. Shout out Lynch Lifts. You guys, if you're in what city? Charlotte. Charlotte and, they, and Daytona, Florida. And Daytona, Florida. And Daytona, Florida. Right. Okay. And Atlanta, once my, you know what I'm saying, once I talk to my brother all the way. But definitely Daytona Beach. If you live in Daytona Beach, my boys Pete and Aunt got you. Say if much. you in Charlotte, I'm here. Mm-hmm. Man, just lock in, man. Just lock in. Okay. Well, let's get to the juicy stuff, man. Oh. Put-